In this video, we're going to learn about instancing and how we can place multiple trees without them overlapping. Hey, how's it going guys? My name is Daniel aka Hashlips and welcome back to my channel and this series where we learn more about React 3 Fiber and how to use 3D objects in the browser. If you want to follow along, I highly recommend watching this playlist from the start. Now to get to today's video, what we are going to do is place multiple trees and without them overlapping. Now before in the previous video, we've created this component called trees, but currently it's only displaying one tree. So let's see how we can clone this and place them everywhere in our scene. Firstly, let's go ahead and create a state variable. This will be our trees and an array that will save our trees. We need a set trees as well as trees. And this will be equal to the use state hook and for now an empty array. At the top of our component, we're going to declare our props and our props will have a boundary, which is going to be of type number as well as a count, which is also a number. Then we'll specify that our trees component is type of react.functional component and we need to pass it in our props type. Then we can now extract the boundary as well as the count and we can pass these in as we create our trees component. So back in the index.tsx in the trees we need to now specify that this will have a boundary and let's make the boundary 50. And we also need a count, which will make 20. The count will represent how many trees we want. And the boundary will specify the area that we want to generate these trees in. Back in the trees component, what we now can do is specify a new type. And this will be our tree type. In order to place our trees, we need some more information about a tree. So one of the informations is the position. And we're going to only work with the X and Z axes. So we can say that we'll present it with the X as well as the Z. And then it will also have a box, which is a number. The position will tell us where we can place the tree. And the box will be the bounding areas of the tree itself, most likely just the stump. But basically, this is important because we need to know if a tree is going to overlap another tree and give it a new position. Now that we have the new types, let's create a use effect. This use effect is a function that will kick off every time that we change the boundaries or the count. So we have to add the boundaries or the count as the dependencies for this function. It means that every time we change the count or the boundary on the outer level, this will rerun. But what do we want to rerun? Well, in here, we would like to create a new variable. And this will be our temp trees. This will be type of the tree type array. And for now, we're going to set it to an empty array. And then we'll implement a for loop. So in JavaScript, what you can do is you can say for a variable name is equal to zero. And then as long as the variable is less than something, and in our case, the count that we have specified, then we'll iterate and increase i. This will create a for loop for us and loop as many times as our count is specifying. Inside of this loop, we want to push to the temp trees a new tree type. So what we can do is say temp trees dot push. And what are we going to push? Well, we first of all need a position, which will be an X of zero and a Z of zero. Then we'll also need the box, which in our case would be one. This should go ahead and populate empty trees in our tree array. And to prove this, let's go ahead and log the temp trees out, save this, and let's go back to our application open up the console uh, here in the developer tools. And if you want to get there, just uh, right click or press shift command and C. 
In the console itself, we can now refresh and we should see a list of trees. At this point, this is merely a list, but the trees are not really rendered in the scene. Each one has a box with a size of 1 and a position of X and Z, which is 0. This is the base position. We can now go ahead and render this to the scene, but they will all be on the exact same position. So what we need to do first is go ahead and update each one's position, making sure that it doesn't overlap. From here on out, it is going to get a bit technical, but please bear with me. We now need to take this array and update each tree's position, making sure it doesn't overlap. So let's create a new function and call it update position. This function will be responsible for taking in the tree array. So let's say tree array. This will be type of tree type array, as well as a boundary, which is going to be type of number. We can go ahead and call this function here, right after our for each loop, passing in the temp trees and our boundary that we are passing in into the component. Now this function will be called. In here, we firstly need to now loop over the trees and change each one's position. We'll use a for each loop to loop over this. So we'll say for each and in here we'll say for each tree and we need the index. Let's do something. Let's update each tree's position. Because we have access to each tree, we can say tree.position.x is equal to something. And let's give it a math.random value and the random we're going to times by a hundred. And we'll do the same thing for the z position. Next, after doing this for each, we would like to set the trees, and this is our parameter up here, set the trees to our tree array. The fact that it's red is just because TypeScript doesn't know what we want to do. So in here we can say that this needs to be a tree type array. Now that we are setting the trees, we can actually map over them in here in our group and display it. So we can say for the trees, let's map over them. And for each tree, we can technically do this with an index as well, because we need to pass a key. Let's return something. And what we'll return is an object 3D, which will wrap our primitive copy in, like we've done before. And we'll give it the key of the index. And then for the position, we can now easily set that from our tree. So we know that the tree has a position dot x. For the y, we're going to keep it to zero because we want to keep the trees to the ground. And then we're going to use the z position of our tree. When we save this and go back to our application, we should see the trees being randomly generated. This is great and it looks like it's achieving the job. However, if we generate more trees, we might find that some of them will be exactly on top of each other and that's not really what we want. We want to be assured that no tree is going to be on top of each other. Also, to get a better representation of the bounding box that we're going to use to check if something is overlapping, let's create a mesh and in here let's create a box geometry. And then let's give it a mesh basic material. We can make the color blue. And let's also add wireframe. For the scale, what we can do is basically pass in the tree dot box. And this value we can basically repeat for the X, Y, and Z. Now that we have this, we should see these blue bounding boxes around the stumps of the tree. So far so good. But how do we determine that the positions won't overlap? Well for that I'm going to add a new function here. 
It's called new position. And this function takes in a box and the whole boundary where all the trees are generated. Here it will make sure that the box's position is at least inside of the whole boundary as well as inside of the box and then we'll give it a random position. Now this is so that we don't just randomly create a position. We actually have a function that will take in the tree.box as well as the boundary. And this we can put for the Z axis as well. Now this will at least generate the trees so that they are inside of our bounding area. Remember in the code, in the index file, we set the bounding area to 50. If we expand this to 100, we should see the trees spread out more. And if we lessen this to 20, we should see them closely together. But this still doesn't ensure us that a tree won't overlap another bounding area. In order to keep on generating a new position until we are sure that nothing is overlapping, we need a function that's going to check if something is overlapping another object. Now I've got this function over here. And yes, it is a bit big and that's why I'm expanding the screen so you can copy this over. So please pause the video and copy this function. It's a bit heavy for me to type out and I'll explain it in just a second. Once you are done copying that, there's one more here, which is the box intersect function. And this you'll need to copy as well. Now, we need to run through this, so bear with me because it is going to be a bit technical, but after the explanation, you will understand. The is overlapping function will be called over and over to check if an object is not overlapping something else. So it takes in an index, a tree object, the whole tree array, and then it starts off by console.logging the tree position. We can get rid of this, and then it creates four variables. One for the minimum x and the maximum x of the actual tree that we want to check. This is determined by taking the position and either adding or subtracting its own box divided by 2. This means that we will know the boundaries that we need to check. Then it moves into a for loop to try and check each child of all the trees. And if it does this, it creates the same four variables for each child. It checks the box intersect function. The box intersect function takes in a bunch of parameters and basically returns a value true or false whether the box is overlapping or not. So in here we would get back a true or false value. If this value is true, it means that the box is overlapping. Okay? And then we'll console.log that it found an overlapping box and it will return true for the is overlapping function. If it didn't find that this new position overlaps any of the other trees, it will return false. If you don't understand the math fully, don't worry. You don't have to understand how electricity works, but you can still use the light. So, we're going to take this is overlapping function. Then, let's go down here to our for each loop. Inside this for each loop, we want to add a do while loop. We want to say, do something, and we want you to create a new position while something else. Now, we want to say, while this is overlapping, create for us a new position. And the is overlapping function takes in the index, which we have, and next it takes in the tree, which we also have. We will pass it the current tree array. And now that we have added this, basically a new position will be created. 
Test it if this position is overlapping, and if it is, it will create another position. And it will do this over and over until nothing overlaps. And now that that's implemented, we can be assured that our tree bounding boxes will never overlap, even if we make it very small. So if we make this a bounding area of 10, we can see that it's packed tightly, but never overlaps another bounding area. How cool is that? Now, to make it look more realistic, what we can do is let's generate 50 trees in an area of a hundred. If we go back, this looks pretty natural and we are assured nothing will overlap. I really want to congratulate you for making it this far. I know that this video was a bit more technical, but if you made it, then congratulations. And if you enjoyed the content and learned something, then give this video a like, remember to subscribe and comment below, it really helps the channel. And then I'll see you in the next video. Cheers for now.